Hello everyone, welcome back to Study Onion, and today we're going to be talking about the celestial sphere and coordinate systems. Let's get started. So in topic one, we talked about the latitude and longitude system, and the equatorial coordinate system is similar. So we are now going to look at a similar network of lines which we use to like map stars and other celestial objects in the sky. So if we look at the celestial sphere it's basically just a sphere which is projected outwards from the earth and we use this to map objects in the sky. This is called the celestial sphere, and you can see that in the image here, while the Earth is rotating, that your celestial sphere is just an enlargement of the Earth with lines on it to enable us to map objects. So, in terms of the poles and the equator, the celestial sphere uses the same reference points as latitude and longitude. But there's no celestial obvious equivalent of the prime meridian. And just as a reminder, the prime meridian marks the zero of longitude. But to create a prime meridian for the celestial sphere, we can't just use the equivalent of the prime meridian because the Earth is constantly rotating. But to create a rough prime meridian for the celestial sphere, we use a couple of different elements. The first one we need is the path that is taken by the sun around the celestial sphere in one year, and this is known as the ecliptic. Now, the celestial projection of the equator is called the celestial equator, and we can do this because despite the Earth constantly rotating, the equator stays in roughly the same place. Now, the point at which the ecliptic which again is the path taken by the sun, cuts the celestial sphere on its path from south to north, and this is really important, south to north is the first point of Aries. So we name the uh, prime meridian equivalent celestial meridian, but we create that by essentially finding the first point of Aries, and then drawing a line all the way around the celestial sphere until it comes back to the first point of Aries, as you can see in this diagram over here. So let's talk about the equatorial coordinate system. So the equatorial coordinate system has two main kind of coordinates as such, X and Y. So declination is the projection of latitude onto the celestial sphere. And we're looking at that being more kind of like your latitude, but um, it's got one main difference. So it's measured in degrees, where the plus indicates north and the minus indicates south. So instead of using your cardinal points like north and south as you did in latitude, we use our um, symbols instead to represent the north and the south celestial poles. Now, right ascension, which is slightly more complicated, is measured from the first point of Aries eastwards. It's also measured in hours and minutes, and this is really important. So 360 degrees, as we know, because that's the, it's, that's the full spin of the circle, is equal to 24 hours. Now, 360 divided by 24, so that we can get the value of one hour, is equal to 15 degrees. And as we all know, one hour is equal to 60 minutes. So 60 minutes is also equal to 15 degrees. Now, if we divide to get one minute's value, we get that one minute is equal to 0 0.25 degrees. And just so that we have whole number values, we would use one degree 
as being equal to four minutes. And this is really important, and I would recommend you learn one of these facts because it will be really helpful when we come to do maths questions on this topic. So, that was the equatorial coordinate system. And I just want to quickly mention a point about the first point of Aries before we move on. So on or around March the 21st, which is the spring equinox, the sun slowly moves from the south to the north across the celestial equator. The first point of Aries, therefore, marks the zero of right ascension. And that's just something you also need to know, that the first point of Aries is the zero of right ascension. Now, if we look at the star chart as such on this slide, we can see that close to the celestial equator, the right ascension lines look like they're almost parallel. But as they get closer to the uh, celestial equator, poles the lines begin to converge like you see the lines of la longitude converging on the world maps. Now you, I'm just going to quickly note that when we're looking at star charts we are inside the celestial sphere so we're looking at it outward instead of looking at it from outside the celestial sphere. So when we are looking at this we are on the earth and we're looking outwards to the celestial sphere. Now because we're inside the celestial sphere your right ascension increases to the left. So while you're outside it increases eastwards but when you're inside, it's the opposite, and we increase to the left because our perspective has changed. However, there is a slightly easier system, and this system is known as the horizontal coordinate system. And this is a system which is much preferred by astronomers. So the horizontal coordinate system also has these two sections as such. So azimuth is a measurement taken from the geographical north moving around eastwards until the point is directly under the observer's horizon under the star. So if we look at this image here we can see that your azimuth goes from your geographical north all the way until it's directly under your star and it moves along your horizon. Altitude is then found by the angle from the celestial observer's horizon up to the star or another celestial object. And it can range from zero degrees, which means it lies on the horizon, or to 90 degrees to a point we call the zenith and that is the highest point in the sky so when an observer looks up and points directly up your zenith is what you can find. So to summarise the celestial sphere is a sphere projected outwards from the earth and it's used to map stars and other objects in the sky. There is an issue with the celestial meridian which means that the celestial meridian is found by the place where the path taken by the sun around the sphere in one year, which is called the ecliptic, meets the celestial equator. And this point is called the first point of Aries. The equatorial coordinate system has declination and right ascension. Declination is the projection of latitude onto the celestial sphere, and it's measured in degrees, where positive indicates north and negative indicates south. Right ascension, on the other hand, is measured eastwards from the first point of Aries in hours and minutes. When you are looking at star charts, however, right ascension increases to the left. One degree in the Earth's spin is equal to four minutes. Horizontal coordinate systems also have two values. You have your azimuth, which is the measurement taken from your geographical north to uh, round eastwards until the point on the observer's horizon is found directly under the star. Altitude is then found by the angle from the observer's horizon up to the star or any other celestial object, and it can range from zero to 90 degrees, which means it's on the zenith. 
Hopefully you learned more about both coordinate systems and you were able to learn more about the celestial sphere. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye!